Oh, hello. Good morning. It is too early. I'm Anthony Carboni. And I'm Sage Ryan, and it's good to see you. Oh, welcome to the first best and only morning show in existence, friends. Uh, you know, we skipped Wednesday. Feels like we haven't done this show in forever, and we only skipped one show. We skipped one show. The elasticity of time has not yet been repaired. No. It is 8.12 a.m. here. Please mm -hmm. put an arrow next to your name in chat, and whatever time it is where you are, just so we can check and make sure, uh, should be 8.12 for everyone as long as time is working. Now, I thought the time would be fixed potentially on January 1st, and that did not happen quite mm -hmm. clearly. And then I was like, well, maybe it will be fixed on January 20th. And yet, time. Time. What's it about? This isn't that kind of show. <laughs> Sorry. No, this is a show where we talk about video games mostly, and then also other things on the internet that made us giggle. The big Capcom announcements, including... We including got your home address. Yes. They flashed everyone's home address and phone numbers and credit card numbers that were stolen in the leak. Yes. Uh, it was wild, and but, now I know where all of you live. But after they showed us your address and your phone number, they did give us the Resident Evil 8 demo to distract mm -hmm. us. So that's really exciting. Yep, they had the big RE8 showcase yesterday. That's the opening, and when I push that button, the show starts. <laughs> And I was just keeping Sage on her toes, and I'm keeping you on your toes. <laughs> Do you keep me on my toes? Um, the RE8 showcase was yesterday. Shout outs to uh, Britt, who did a wonderful job hosting. And we got a lot of announcements about Resident Evil 8, as, as well as the demo. Yes, we got Vampire Mommy. We got a lot more information on our Vampire Mom. Ooh, Vampire uh, Mommy. Yeah, right. I've got I've got complex feelings for Vampire Mommy. I also have complex feelings for her, and that's great. I love it. Uh, I cannot wait to play the demo. I have not gotten to it yet. I will probably stream it on my channel in the next few days. I'm very excited about it. Yeah, we got a lot of new gameplay. We also mm -hmm. got release date and uh, and announcements on. This is the least exciting part of it to me. So let's just get it out of the way. Yeah. Uh, collectors and deluxe edition content. Now, you may say, Anthony, just a few days ago on this very show, you were talking about physical releases for things like Scott Pilgrim. Yeah. You were talking about No Man's Sky. Mm -hmm. You were talking about limited run games and yeah, how much- Yeah, those limited edition Splatoon figures. Yeah, and you were talking about how much you love that stuff. Why do you not like collectors and deluxe edition stuff? That seems- uh, hypocritical? It does. It seems, well, let me tell you something. It's not. It's just interesting and complex, mm -hmm. which is what I am. Uh, wow. Here's the thing. I do like a good collector's edition. Yes. But a good collector's edition, I think, is very rare. Yeah, agreed. Um, and as someone who hasn't played the game yet, I mean, maybe something about playing the game will make this really impactful and meaningful. Entirely possible. Uh... Uh, Chris figures a little awkward. The box is okay. It's it it's a box. It's a box. It and, is just a box. And it is it is gonna be it is gonna be that thin cardboard. Yes, it's gonna be that papery cardboard. Uh, the art book, of course, is is great. I always love love concept an art, art And I gotta say, you know, when we get when we get a little bit more into this demo, which we're going to talk about in just a moment, I am loving the visual style of eight. Yes, it looks absolutely stunning. Now, if that figure, however, was of our hot vampire mom. Why wasn't it vampire mom? I would love to know. If it was hot vampire mom, I'd be all over the collector's edition. Or what about the vampire lady that turns into hornets that I think is probably the sage self-insertion fanfic character of the game? A hundred percent. I looked at that <laughs> and I was like, she's smiling and she's crazy and she's got bugs in her teeth. That's my girl. <laughs> That's her. Yeah. Uh, then there's a steel book. I've never been a big steel book person mm -hmm. because they don't, they're not the same size as other disc cases on your shelf. Right. And it makes, it makes that little part of my brain itch. Yeah. 
I've never been one in general for collector's editions of games um, because if there is something that I want in my house to represent a fandom that I appreciate, I want to pick out an individual piece that suits my aesthetic. Mm -hmm. I'm very particular about that. So I tend to, I'd rather go buy something on my own that's like a figure of a particular character that I love and an art style that I love. Yeah. Um, yes, that's exactly how I feel. And then with posters, it's like, are you gonna fold up that poster and put it in that box? Is that poster gonna be folded? Ooh. Is it gonna, it better come in like a mini Ooh. tube. But it's probably not going to. The dog's getting into chaos The dog there. is, the the dog is wild the this morning. The dog's full of beans. Folks, the dog is wild today. But, um, you know, hopefully it's for somebody. I did it for Monster Prom, honestly well worth it. Now I could see that the characters in Monster Prom are so cute that I feel like you couldn't go wrong for a collector's edition of Monster Prom. I'm very curious what it came with though. I didn't see the collector's addiction, addition, addiction. Should we take a look at this beautiful demo that they yeah, showed? Yeah, I would love to. However, not too much because I can't wait to play it. All right. You'll be taking control. So you are Ethan Winters again, just mm -hmm. like you were in Resident Evil 7. And I have to say, I really enjoy immediately the aesthetic of this more than I enjoy the aesthetic of Resident Evil 7. Mm -hmm. I think Resident Evil 7 was a was an incredibly smart move for the series to bring it to that sort Such of like- a good game. It had that like Blumhouse horror, like trapped in the South, like family vibe, which, yes, I, which I like. Um, but this brings Resident Evil back to a big, spooky, gothic mansion. Yes, even better. Which I love. A hundred percent. We love vampires getting involved, absolutely. I love a bug lady, ugh. Yeah, bring in the vampires, why not? Now, the bugs were one of the most unsettling things in Resident Evil 7 for me. I just think they did such an excellent job with making you feel like you're covered in bugs. There were areas in Resident Evil 7 where you're climbing through walls and crawl spaces. That's what the Greg Miller review said, is like you really feel like you're covered in bugs. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> No, I'm serious though. It was so uncomfortable. I can't imagine because RE7 is also in VR. Uh, I cannot imagine. Oh, I, uh, 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 I'm gonna have to do it one day. There she is. There's bug. There are the bug ladies. I one love, of them is definitely I love you. Them. This one. This one is definitely yeah, here's, Sage. Here's big smile. Yep. Just a big old swipe. <laughs> just got her meat hook in you, and she's just gonna take you into the other room. I appreciate that um, in your opinion, all crazy ladies are mean. No, 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 she's also goth. Okay, fair. She she uh, really young, enjoys- Young, crazy, small. Young, crazy, small, goth, uh -huh. enjoys a dramatic look. Yes. A nice, a nice likes, to put, likes to get a full face, likes to get a nice beat on, uh -huh. you know? A happy crazy. A happy crazy, you know? Yeah, in me. Uh, but there it, is, there it is, and it's beautiful. They also announced that uh, it will be coming to PS4 and Xbox One, which was not previously announced. Oh, interesting. It was next gen only. And here's what I think is interesting. The way they discussed it in the showcase was they were saying it's coming to current gen and next gen consoles, which I think is a very sweet and polite way to say it. Because once the next gen console is out, mm -hmm. it is the current gen. Right. I like I like that the producer of Resident Evil 8 was like, well, it's gonna be on current gen and it's also on old old busted box if you have old busted box. Like yeah, right. you could tell he was trying not to say that. It's on your old trash can? I, I don't, don't know. Do what are you what are you using that? KFC console? I don't know. It'll it's probably there. Is there any plan for it to be in VR? They have not announced anything about VR, but I would imagine they got. They're gonna put it in VR. I would imagine there's there's going to be. I mean, it is. It's in the RE engine, mm -hmm. so it is the same engine as Resident Evil Seven, which right. they've already done the VR work in and the VR modifications in. And you know the way uh, the way the industry works is once the work is done and you've paid the money, yeah. the more content you can insert into that. Of course, the more money you make off of the tool you built. Mm -hmm. Uh, I think the biggest thing that people are waiting for right now is that PSVR uh, install base to go back up. Like I keep forgetting to order my um, my adapter to use my PSVR on my PS5. Yeah. And I feel like I have to order it soon. I feel like they stopped giving them away soon. 
Oh, interesting. If yeah. anybody in chat knows what's up with that, let me know. I just got to get off my ass and do it. with the Oculus 2 becoming more available because it was really hard to get early on, like Oculus 2 has been very, very, selling very, very well. Oh, yeah. Well, look, we're all the trying easiest to... easiest VR console yet. And we're all just trying to get out of our escape pods. So true. That's all. We're all just, hey, we should just bring up a picture of Vampire Mommy. What yeah, do I, sure. What do I search for? Vampire Mommy? I mean, yeah, I guess. You could also go to the like IGN article that's in there. No, I'm just going to look up Vampire Mommy. Yeah, wow. Okay, wow. The YouTube, first... Uh, yeah, Tall Vampire Mommy. Tall Vampire Mommy. Tall Vampire Mommy. You know, I'm going to tell you vampire that's a mommy. thing to Google. <laughs> Lady Dimitrescu. Dimitrescu. Real vampire name. There she is. That's it. There she is. Yeah. It's the Oops All Vampire Mommy cut. Yeah. I love that it's somebody a fan cam. I love that somebody did a vampire mommy fan cam. Yeah. <laughs> Shout excellent. out to the community. Right? We love it. I can't wait to play it. It's uh, gonna be good. You know, Resident Evil is one of those is one of those series where I'm up and down on it. Mm -hmm. I'm hot and cold on Resident Evil. Um the first few were were awkward garbage. RE4 was such a revelation of a game. And look, the first couple are the first the first three Resident Evil games, no lie, created survival horror as we know it. I completely understand that. The same way I completely understand what Final Fantasy VII did for the JRPG. It was boring and hard to play. Resident <laughs> Evil 4 fucking owned. Yes. Fucking owned. Uh with the um and with the trailer we also got an announcement of a release date which is May 7th. Yep. Which is very exciting. We right. also got a uh, a look at Resident Evil Reverse a, sh a shooter in the Resident Evil world. That's a multiplayer online, you know, it's the 25th anniversary of Resident Evil. They're doing a big they they're doing okay. a big Resident Evil push. And mm -hmm. I Love the look of this, in all honesty. I haven't watched the trailer for it yet, so let's see it. I love the weird, uh, weird comic booky look. I love the mix of all the characters from the different games. Okay. Uh, and I love there's some sort of mechanic here where one of the players, sort of like, sort of like the heroes and villains mechanic in a Battlefront, or That's almost like something like setting. a, uh, almost something like a like a Friday the Thirteenth. Like, look, <gasps> somebody dies and becomes Nemesis. <laughs> Like you can you can randomly become nemesis. Fascinating. Okay, that's a very interesting mechanic. And although I am not big on shooters, if I was gonna play one, that that would definitely be something I would want to try out. I like a fun over the top shooter like that. Like I really liked the. I appreciated in Uncharted Three that there was a bonus item that turned you into a cloud of spiders. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? That's the kind of shit that I enjoy. Yeah. Like, let's get weird and wild yeah. with it. And I feel sure. like they're doing that. As far as shooters go, that actually does look very fun. Um, other things were a Resident Evil and Division 2 crossover was announced. Mm. Okay, Ubisoft. Sure. All right, yeah. Uh, and then there was a Resident Evil Netflix movie tease. Now, this is interesting. Yeah. And there had been, like, light buzzing that it might happen, but this was definitely the first confirmation of it. Now, the TV series we know is coming. Mm -hmm. It's going to be a brand new story, so mm -hmm. it's not connected to the games. It's not connected to the Mila Jovovich series. Mm -hmm. uh, but this movie, we don't, we don't know if it's also connected to the series. Yeah. It could be its own standalone thing. It's, uh, an, it's a Netflix animated movie, and that's all we really know. I'm... I think they're calling it Infinite Darkness? Yeah, get... get Japanese with it. All right. Get real Japanese with it. I'm here. Okay. I'm here for it. Yeah. That's very interesting. And it's cool. I mean, they've certainly got the attention right now to expand beyond the games, which is very, very cool because the remakes for two and three did so well. And we've talked about this a few times. Like, do we think they'll remake four? I would love... I would love just a just an updated version of four. I know we got an HD version of four already back in the day. I yeah. get that. I know the I know the PC modding community, bless your hearts, has done a lot of stuff with the PC version of Resident Evil Four. Mm -hmm. But like, ooh, with those rays traced, trace those rays all over. I don't know. I don't know. I'd like to see it. Other wonderful aesthetic things in games. 
like so, an old Jewish man. You're finally awake. Um, I'm sure you have all seen Bernie uh, sitting at the inauguration with his precious little mittens. Our sweet boy sat there uh, not understanding there were going to be four bands and not three. And he was really upset. Oh, he was such an old person at the show. Yeah. He was, he just was like, such an old guy at the show. Oh, how many songs? He's one of those had? dudes like at the Hollywood Bowl when you go to a show and it's like, how long is this opening act? Right. I, have, I wanted to be in bed by 11. A hundred percent. He was not having a great time. Look, it was cold. He's also wearing the same jacket that he was wearing in the last Bernie meme that went viral, which was, I am once again asking for your financial support. Of course he is. It's a good jacket. He owns one jacket. Yeah. You only need one. You only this need one good winter coat. This is why we trust Bernie with our, with our money. You only need one good winter coat. So, of course, the internet did what the internet does, and the internet started putting Bernie into everything. Bernie's mittens, Bernie and his mittens are in every game. There he is in the background of Cyberpunk hanging out at the bar. Yeah. Yeah, of course. <laughs> Absolutely excellent. I love it so much. Uh, I'm once again asking you to kill a bandit chief. <laughs> 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 oh, this is so good. It is so good. Uh, somebody also actually made a website where you can just put Bernie in it. I love all of the Bernie at Artist Alley. Bernie at Artist Alley. There was one where Bernie was working the merch table at a punk show that I yep. really liked. <laughs> And because he, he has that vibe of the dude working the merch table at the punk show. It's just like, yeah, my friends in the band, whenever they come to Chicago, they get to sleep in my place and I'll work their merch table. They as someone, me, they pay me 50 bucks. As someone who has been the person working the band's merch table, can confirm. Oh, coffee talk. Oh, cute. Very cute. Solve Bernie's problems. Do it. Now, oh, oh, oh. Yakuza. Oh my God. That's actually a very good one. That's a very good one. MK12. <laughs> oh my God, the palette swap Kamala. I love that. The palette swap Kamala is so good. Oh my God. They put Michelle on Kamala. That's excellent. <laughs> All right, what else we got? <laughs> Nobody working 40 hours a week should be living in poverty. I mean. Sorry, that is Kamala and Michelle, you're right. Sorry, mm -hmm. that is. Yeah, that's what I said. <laughs> Sorry. Bernie in my game? <laughs> Put Bernie in everything. Anthem 2.0 patch notes. It was a very good list. If you have some of your favorite Bernie memes, please drop them in the Discord. Outer Wilds. If you have some, drop them in the Discord. However, are you able to pull up the Discord real quick? Uh, I have the ability to pull up the Discord. You have the ability to do so? I can pull up the Discord. I'm kind of a hacker. Yeah, kind of a hacker. I'm kind of a little bit of a hacker. Okay, because- I am wearing a leather jacket, which means I'm a hacker. He's in everybody. I did get into the Discord late last night and I was like, okay, well, who's gonna put Bernie at the It's Too Early table? So in the It's Too Early channel, there is in fact a photo of some other things as well. There we go. Thank you to Son of Orpheus. <laughs> and that's the look. He that's sits right here between us. That's a perfect frame because that is the look that we would give if we like, if Bernie slendermaned his way into our shot. Yeah, 100%. You know what I mean? We, like, we just looked up at the monitor and we we're like, okay, Bernie. Yeah. No notes. Thank you, Orf. We appreciate it very, very much. Uh, somebody also was kind enough to put uh, Bernie in failed save too, actually, which was very funny. That was a good one too. I am once again asking you to roll for initiative. This is the culmination of all things. I just love it. And look, you can rag, you, you can rag on him. You can you can dunk on him. Uh, I think most of these are are good natured. Oh yeah. In all honesty, because God, I honestly. As much as I loved Inauguration Day for mm -hmm. so many reasons. Yes. For so many reasons. I did not really watch the inauguration. I did not get into the inauguration mm. uh, festivities. I watched uh, I watched the speeches and mm -hmm. some of the presentations later. Yeah. I watched Amanda Gorman's. I watched Amanda Gorman for sure. Yeah. Peace. I watched. I got a little emotional at Kamala being sweared in, even though she's yeah. a cop. Watched a little bit of the swearing ins and the in the speeches, but like here's what I'll tell you. I, much like Bernard Sanders, 
wondered to myself why we are spending so much money and so much time on the deification of these people when we're when there is work to do and the money could be spent better elsewhere. Hey. Do not turn down a two thousand dollar. It shouldn't be a two thousand dollar check. Jimmy's, please. It should be two thousand dollars a month, mm -hmm. at least. Maybe a little stimmy. Don't do that while you're while you're like. I know most of these performers are performing for free, but yeah. hey, do you think that do you think that thousand person security detail is free? Do you think those chairs are free? Hey, have you ever have you ever heard how much it costs to rent chairs? It's fucking ridiculous. In it's addition, stupid. everything's more expensive in COVID. You're having to pay for all of the COVID precautions, fireworks, and, and shit, putting people at risk and danger. I don't know. Exposure. The chairs are doing it for exposure. <laughs> I just, I feel the same way Bernie does. He's like, I'm not renting a tux for this. No. Why would I spend money to rent a tux for this? No. It's he, cold and I'm not doing it. My favorite thing was people were like, the people who were like, Bernie looks like he definitely was going to the inauguration today, but the inauguration isn't all he has to do today. Yeah, that was a great one on it. Like, that was a great take. Bernie's got errands to run afterwards. He has a meeting beforehand. He's going to stop by. He knows it's important to you. Yes, absolutely. He'll be there. He wants to be there, mm -hmm. but he's got other things to do today. Yeah. I'm trying to find there was and also I feel like one. we as a country should have been like, we've got other things to do today. Yeah, right? We have got other things to do today. Thank you for coming, John Legend. Thank you the, for coming. The, the symbolism of John Legend showing up after publicly getting into Twitter fights with our last president. Hilarious. It's great. I love it. I love all the dunking. It was wonderful. Love a good dunk. Yeah. Uh, the pomp and circumstance I can do without. Let's not immediately turn to, de to deifying politicians again. Rust is back. Rust is more than back. It's hard to log on to Twitch right now and look at your following feed and find somebody ghost, that isn't I, ghost. playing Ghost, keep your hands away from the switcher, Ghost. <laughs> Please, I'm begging you, dude. Please, I'm begging you. And just, you don't- Let us do the show. You don't want my angry water. Rust is a game that has been around since 2016 uh, and had a dedicated fan base that was still playing and making playthroughs on YouTube. Uh, but it recently absolutely exploded in the streaming community and now everyone is playing it. As we were talking about earlier, it's sitting in that vein of Fall Guys and Among Us and Phasmophobia, where people are utilizing it as an opportunity to collaborate with other streamers. You're seeing these big collectives of streamers with collective hundreds of thousands of views uh, coming together to play a game. And now I think that these groups of people are just looking for any game that they can move on to next that they all can all keep playing and farming views together. And it's, it's interesting because I, I do wonder if like, in the background, you've also got, yes, my hand has to go there to, to work the switcher. Yes, you figured it out. <laughs> um, if, if I'm a game publisher, mm -hmm. or I'm working in games PR right now, yeah. my goal, and especially, and if I'm somebody who is part of one of these loose affiliations of, of gaming streamers or gaming YouTubers, mm -hmm. I am looking to find ways to work together to push weird smaller budget games forward, right? Yes. Or like if I'm if I'm somebody that's working PR right now, I'm looking for a group of people that will take my weird my weird multiplayer game. Absolutely, and especially play one that's already had its life and play it for fun. Yeah. Um but you know Rust really feels like it was chosen almost out of random. Yeah, right? Uh I think it it came out of I believe the big the big inciting incident here was what is the name of that um, that sort of streamer collective that that is was sort of started by Pokimane. Um, oh, it was the, the offline was something. Was it Thieves? No, because she was a part of. She was part of Hundred Thieves, but she's part of something called offline. Oh, offline, offline TV. TV. Mm -hmm. So offline TV created a server mm. and had a lot of their had a lot of their members and then a lot of their friends come on yeah. and start streaming Rust. And it's very interesting uh, how it just blew up all of a sudden. It really has. Because all it took was them deciding this is the weird game we're playing now. Right. And then, I mean, Twitch is so interesting in that way because Twitch is very based on categories. There isn't the discoverability that YouTube has where um, you're getting recommended things usually based on your preferences and your watch history. Uh, there are like categories that you like, but in general, it's dominated by 
the game category. It's just chatting and then whatever else makes it into that top five. Mm -hmm. And everybody on Twitch is hoping there will be one big streamer streaming it and then it'll it'll just trickle down. They think there's a trickle down economics of games. And a lot of the time that does work, but then a lot of the time you get buried in a category yeah. that 100,000 other people are also streaming it. It's also tricky for a small streamer because these, these top five games, a couple of them are pretty, they have staying power. But like some of the novelty ones and some of the smaller ones are changing week to week and it actually like it becomes expensive because you're buying a lot of games that you necessarily wouldn't have been playing otherwise. Yeah. Just to stay in the top categories. But I think I, I would be shocked if there wasn't some sort of background thought by offline TV. Mm -hmm. Can we push this game into the limelight? Like Interesting. we have fun with it. Yeah. But if they like I would like to think there's somebody there who's thinking, can we show how much is there a game we can choose that can show how much we can push a game forward in the world and then we can attach a dollar value to that? Woo! And then the next time they're pitching to a game like, hey, pay us to play it, they can go, look what we did. Look what we did. Look at Rust. We made this We made this game that's, that was in early access for five years. We made it We made it pop off again. Yeah, we brought made it back. One of the number one games on Twitch. Uh, and that's massive. So it's been very interesting to see that. It's been hard, too, because I haven't had a lot of those games blow up that I personally really enjoyed. Like, Among Us is fun with friends as long as the friends are fun. Among Us is a cute, good game, mm -hmm. no doubt. Fall Guys was cute. It was great. Uh, Phasmophobia was fun with friends. <laughs> um, I haven't played Rust yet, but I also can't help but be frustrated by the way it is taking Twitch. Mm -hmm. by this like view farming collaborative thing where people aren't playing games that they love anymore and instead they're playing games that will hopefully get them attention or give them the opportunity to play with a larger streamer. Yeah. That's very frustrating to me. I don't like that. It feels icky in my heart and my soul, um, which is hard, but I do like team-based games. I do yeah. love an online multiplayer. Absolutely. My favorite way to game is with friends. I prefer that to solitary gaming. Yeah. So I honestly, I can't play an online multiplayer game unless mm -hmm. it is with a core group of people I know. Mm -hmm. I'm not one of those people that can just jump onto a server and have fun. Yeah. Uh, I have to have friends there with me. Yeah. I have to. Same. Um, so I think, I think, I think these games are fun and they're fun with friends. But like you're saying, I just. The feeling that everybody is playing a game simply because it's a popular game, it it makes Twitch a little, even as somebody who just mostly watches Twitch and, and doesn't create as much or pin as much of their livelihood to it, it just makes it feel a little homogenous to watch. And I think every social media platform has gone through it. I think that YouTube went through where everybody was making the same kind of content because it was getting views. They were mm -hmm. like, oh shit, daily vlogs getting views? Well, I was making these like cinematic short films, but now I daily vlog. Yeah. Because daily vlogs were getting the views. And that's also part of having to stay alive as a creator. It's fucking hard. Yeah. It is hard to make enough money to survive as a full-time streamer. I'm so, just gonna make sure, because Ghost, Ghost ran into these cookies. I'm just gonna make sure that there are still enough cookies. Just, okay. Yeah, that's fine. Well. In talking about this and in us just kind of racking our brain over what it was about Rust and what it was about Among Us, again, old games, mm -hmm. we were like, well, what's in our Steam library that could have been the next one or could be the game and, that we play with our friends and, and farm views with? And would have been interesting to us. Yeah. What would we, what would we like to be the next thing that breaks out again? Uh, so we're, let's go back and forth, shall we? You want to do your first one? Okay. So my first one is kind of a combination of two games because it could be either one. All of those do not link. Only one link is in there. Oh, dope. Excellent. Um, so my first one is Gang Beasts or Human Fall Flat. Though they do not have the same developer, they are remarkably similar in play style. Uh, but you're a gooey little bean. And uh, in, in Gang Beasts, it's kind of like a knockout competition. And in Human Fall Flat, it's often like a map obstacle course. And you are just, I'll show that. That's Gang Beasts. A lot Love of people Gang have played Beasts. it. And like Gang Beasts didn't have no popularity, but it cer certainly didn't hit Fall Guy status, right? You're gooey beans. Gang Beasts was so fun. And I feel like it was popular for a little while. Yeah. Um, but I, I think it kind of, it just missed this trend of like, what's the weirdest thing we can play? What's the weirdest, cutest thing we can play? I don't understand why we aren't all doing this. 
Like this is so much more interesting to watch to me than Among Us. <laughs> Bye, and that's bro. no shade to Among Us. Like Bye, genuinely. Bro. Later. <laughs> Later. Do you know what I think? Do you know what I think part of it is? There's something to Among Us where there Among Us phasmophobia, stuff like that. Mm -hmm. It feels like there's room and space to just kind of talk and hang out with your friends while the game is happening. And I think for a lot of people, a lot of streamers, that is the best way to do a group stream. Like in Among Us, when you're just running around doing tasks, mm -hmm. like you could just be having a goofy conversation. Although most people have turned it into a serious everybody be silent right? now thing. That's the thing is everybody's fucking quiet now or if they get killed, they have to be quiet. And when people are talking, they're talking about Among Us strategy. And I'm gonna be honest with you, there's nothing I hate more than Among Us strategy. There is something about it that just like triggers a deep seated anger inside of me for like gamer bros explaining games to me. But yeah. when somebody starts strategizing and really getting into the details of how Among Us should be played and being like, well, you don't start in this room because if you go here, it just makes me want to flip a table. I'm like, shut up and play the game and murder your friends. <laughs> if you played Mafia, if you played, um, you know, Secret Hitler or any of these deception games that were board games first, which these are literally, like Among Us is exactly werewolf, you know? Yeah. Then like, you just play the game and you hope you don't get killed and you have fun doing it. Don't make a thing of it. That's bleh, bleh. Have fun. Have fun. So that's my first contribution. I think Gang Beasts uh, could have been an excellent one or Human Fall Flat. I love jelly beans in that capacity. And I think it would be very fun to play with friends. Yeah. Farm some, I views, on, uh, farm some views on Human Fall Flat. My first one, why is this not the biggest thing on Twitch? A Slither.io. <laughs> Am I serious? I don't even know anymore. Here's what I will tell you. I could play Slither.io for 75 years. Here I am playing Snake uh -huh. online yeah. with 50 other people. These brooms used to be much more packed years ago, but that's why we gotta bring it back. Look how long this boy is. This boy got real oh, long. Oh, that's a real long boy. That boy, now, that boy trapped he, me. Oh. oh, I got that boy! Wow. I got that boy! Oh no, that's kind of fucked up. He oh, I'm a Snake room. Master! Oh, and then you can eat all of the things he drops. Oh shit. Now, I've never seen this game before. So. I am the Slither Master. And it sounds gross when I say it, and I yeah, don't care. Yeah, kind of gross, if I'm honest. Ooh, Slither I'm master. a slippery snake. Whoa. Ooh, that boy's good. Oh, that boy's got us. Yeah. He's oh, there's no getting you. away from this boy. Oh, he's going to circle you. Oh, this yeah. boy. You see what I mean? Slither.io. Oh, interesting, and you can just fold in on yourself. Yeah. Okay. Uh, look, at this did not mean to be a live play, and then here we are. Here we are, because Slither.io rules. Good. It's pretty good. It's pretty good. Oh, this, guy, this guy's got me. I'm out. I mean, he'll just circle you forever. Slither. .io. Okay, I think that's an excellent contribution. In the beginning, I was like, hey, that moves too slow. There's no way. But like, honestly, I got kind of invested. Right? Yeah. Let's make it the number one channel, on, the number one category Imagine on Twitch. Imagine Slither.io, the number one category on Twitch. <sighs> what a beautiful world. Listen, we, we, we've, t we've torn down the wall. We've got a plan in place for vaccines. Why can't we as a country, as a nation, as a society, as a planet? Make Slither.io the number one category on Twitch. Thank you. Probably second to just chatting. Probably second to just chatting. We'll be chatting. realistic. There's no way to dethrone we'll just chatting realistic. if we're honest. Huh. But you've got a lot of slashes in yours. Yeah, because I've got a lot of very similar games. Uh, let's look up Who's Your Daddy. Okay. Y'all have seen me stream Who's Your Daddy if you've come from my channel in any capacity. Who's Your Daddy is a multiplayer game where uh, you are either the baby or the daddy. You can have multiple babies and multiple daddies because we are progressive in that way here mm -hmm. in, in Who's Your Daddy. Listen, I think if you're living your best life, you've got multiple babies and multiple daddies at any time. Right. You know what I mean? So... Uh, Stay you, safe out there, kids. As the father, you are trying to accomplish tasks around the house. You have to get some general chores done. However, as the baby, you're trying to fucking die. That's all babies do. Literally. So all you are doing is navigating the house as a baby, trying to find different ways you could die. It could be jumping into a pool. It could be finding bleach. It could be sticking a fork in a light socket. And you're crawling around, and the dad can pick up get the baby. Get in the oven, baby! <laughs> Bye, daddy. So is that a sound clip? Bye, daddy. 
And the, the, the father then has to try and save said baby. It's perfect. No notes. It is, like, I am hyperventilating laughing every time I have ever played this game and no one else has ever enjoyed playing it with me. I have convinced many people to try and no one has joined me on it. I, they have tried and they've always been like, this is stupid. Um, but it is one of the funniest things on the planet. It is so good. There is a very similar rendition of it that is Granny Simulator, but instead of being yes. a father, you are a grandmother uh, that is trying to save the baby or are you trying to kill the baby? It might be the other way around. I think in Granny Simulator, you're actually trying to fuck up the baby. Oh, that's interesting. That's dark say. and I like that. Because then there's also Granny, which is a totally different Granny thing. Granny is a totally different thing. It's complicated. Fusion Frenzy 2. Bring back Fusion Frenzy 2. Fusion Frenzy and Fusion Frenzy 2 were too early. They came out too early. Fusion Frenzy on the Xbox and Fusion Frenzy 2 on Xbox 360 are a wild future multiplayer game show style competition game. Wow. And, and God damn, I loved some Fusion Frenzy. Loved it. This has got every this has got every game you want in it. And it was so much fun and it is totally backwards compatible. Look at the little game cartridges that were popping up there, the walls that look like game cartridges. It's so good. The aesthetics of this game are so wildly early 2000s. It's so ridiculous. It looks kind of Mario Party style, like in, in gameplay. So it was it was a bit of Mario Party because mm -hmm. Mario Party was already huge. Mini game. But they yeah. wanted to add more actual gameplay to it. Yeah. Stuff that was a little more skill based. Okay. I played Fusion Frenzy for hours. I had never heard of this game. It's so good. And it's all it's all back compat now, baby. It's all back compat. Let's go. Let's bring back Fusion Frenzy. Yeah, sure. That Xbox 360 game. Let's hey, do it. If Rust, why not Fusion Frenzy? If Rust, then why? If if Rust, then why not? Uh, I 100% agree with this next one that you put on. All right. Blackout Club was my next pick. Now, this one is particularly relevant to Phasmophobia blowing up. Phasmophobia blew up and people were like, there's nothing like it. And I was like, well, there kind of is. Actually, Blackout Club was marketed as the devs are always listening and they can fuck with your game actively. It will affect the game, what you say and how you engage. The uh, villains in it are the parents in your neighborhood. You're playing a group of children when something has clearly infected and is like mind controlling all of the adults in a neighborhood. And you are trying to gather evidence to save your neighborhood. I am shocked that this game did not pop off more than it did. They had essentially um, almost like different class builds that you could play based on the tools that you selected. Um, when enemies were getting close, you had to silence just like you do in Phasmophobia. You had to be quiet. Um, but there's added elements to it of the way that the devs can affect your game. Like if you really are getting riled up and you're yelling, and I proved this live on the internet uh, by screaming, hey devs, come get me bitch babies, and then getting absolutely murdered. I love that. Live on I the internet. That. But I also just love that, like, look, I get that part of the fun of Phasmophobia is it's a broken game. Uh-huh. It's the Euro jank of it. Yeah. But this is a fully realized game with it a is. similar concept and mm -hmm. so and much better gameplay. And this this should have just taken off. Yeah. And it really didn't. And, and we, we tried. I had a group of friends that played a good few times on Twitch. Um, there is... One issue that I do have with Blackout Club, and I think that the um, ramping and difficulty is too hard. Okay. Whereas Phasmophobia, it's much easier to just get through and survive. There is a point where um, essentially towards the end of a round, it becomes very difficult. Like most times you lose, quite simply. Um, but I think that there were like small improvements that could have made that game infinitely better. Uh, and it has the exact same kind of play style of a four person team going out to uh, do spooky shit. Yeah. I love it. I like, love it. With bring various back, chats. Bring back Blackout Club. And bring back Super Mario War. Wow. Bring back... I never played it. Super Mario War. You think that's that should be a big Twitch category? Is it, a, is it an illegal mod? Mm -hmm. Sort of. I mean, it was developed from scratch. But look at this beautiful, beautiful single screen... Fuck you. 
destruction game. You can be Waluigi. You can be Waluigi. Yeah. Someone's a Waluigi right you now. You could be a Lugi. You could be a little Bowser. I do love to be a Bowser. There's a little, uh, God, I, I think you could be a Bomberman. They said, hey, want to play Nintendo characters and hurt your friends, but not play Super Smash Brothers? I mean, look at this. You get the P-Wing. This is fun, man. This is just the, this is the classic Super Mario Brothers 3 stomp on the other person's head mode uh -huh. with four players and a shit ton of arenas and a shit ton of power-ups. Isn't this what we used to play online in the PC lab? Yes, it is, Calmer. Yes, it is. And bring it back. Make it popular on Twitch is what I say. It's so easy to play and I'd, it's so much fun. I'd get so annoyed so fast, oh, I bet. I have such a blast playing it. I've never played it, but I would. Maybe for, a, maybe for a Patreon exclusive, we'll play some of these games this week. Play some of the games. All right. My next contribution, I personally think is my greatest. It's also my last contribution, and it is Zookeeper Simulator. It's mostly a loading screen. Here, I'll skip ahead. In Zookeeper Simulator, it is, no. a, simil it is a similar capacity to uh, Who's Your Daddy? It's definitely in the same vein of games, except for you are playing either a zookeeper or a zoo animal. Zookeeper has to try and finish some chores and tasks around the zoo, but you are playing as an animal trying to absolutely destroy things in the zoo and murder the zookeeper. Uh, there is also a dinosaurs version of it. It is the best kind of broken. In the dinosaur version, you can actually ride the golf carts that are around here, like those that are right there actually. You can just jump into those. Uh, but when you are a T-Rex, you are of course, about 10 times larger than this golf cart, and you just, the T-Rex, it just, it just lays across it, it, it just, on top of the golf cart. It just planks a golf cart? It just planks a golf cart with all of its little legs sticking out. Um, it is a very, very good game. And I love it because you can see, Zookeeper has missions up at the top, much like in Among Us, mm -hmm. complete your tasks. Yeah. And then right down here, monkey have grenade. Yeah. Imagine if you were completing your tasks in Among My Us, but you were a monkey zoo. with a grenade. Why not? I love it. Uh, it's a fantastic time, and I genuinely think that it could do so well on Twitch. Like, part of me is joking, but also not at all. Because it's so good. It's so funny. Like, it is so inherently funny that in playing it, you don't have to be funny. The game is hilarious. But plenty of room to be because it's not like a heavily focused it's not like a big competitive uh hard game yeah do it play it i swear it. to you it's so good download it and i think it's only a few dollars on steam i think it's in the like five dollar range my final game does not fit into this category and i don't care i just want it to come back it doesn't make sense for this segment it doesn't matter you just wanted to I, talk about i'm it. just imploring you it is multiplayer it is on steam it is free to play and it has been left to uh, left to languish and be forgotten this is blade symphony blade symphony is a massively multiplayer online anime sword fighting game with free running elements you can do 1v1 you can do 2v2 you can do free for all in arenas you can pick different swords and helmets and stuff. Just the character models are beautiful. It's so good. Just, just bring back Blade Symphony, please, please, Blade Symphony. My wife, she's very sick. Yeah, I've never played it, but I would. Oh, it's so good. It looks excellent. It definitely doesn't fit the category of I can farm views from this. Uh, but it's multiplayer, so but why not? But you could farm views from anything if we made it the most popular the most popular category on Twitch. In a magical world where everybody is playing Blade Symphony mm -hmm. and Fusion Frenzy, come with me to this world. This alternate reality where everything is so fucking cool. Thank you so much for watching today. Why don't you, uh, why don't you go ahead and subscribe? Just hit a little subscribe for me. It's completely free. Can you believe it? I can't believe we just give this show away. We just give it away. You know what? We'll give you one more freebie. You can watch uh, a previous episode. Uh, right now, and then I mean, after a hundred to a hundred and fifty, mm -hmm. uh, we we might start charging. Yeah, so keep an eye out for that, and also for the show live on Twitch every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday morning at eight a.m. Pacific. <laughs>